salvation other than to receive it. How can a dead person save themselves? Think about it. We were dead in our trespasses. Let's go to the next verse. Now, this is past tense for us, so I'll be speaking on this side of the cross for just a little while. That's where we were, on this side of the cross, in which at one time you walked habitly, you were following the course and fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendency, there's that word tendency again, we all have a tendency to go the wrong way, don't we, of this present age following the prince of the power of the air, who is Satan. And he was our father. Hmm. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. So we were in the world, we were lost, we were dead in our trespasses, and there was no hope for us whatsoever. Go to the next verse. Among these, we as well, talking about we, we that are now sons of God on this side of the cross, Christians, saints, but when, before we became saints, before we became sons of God and daughters of God, we lived on this side in the world. We were lost. As you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passion of our flesh. We just did whatever our flesh wanted to do. Fill it up again. I'll take two more shots. Oh, I'm speaking to the wrong crowd. Okay. That's what, that's what I used to do, uh, Naomi. <laughs> I don't know if you did that or not. <laughs> okay, that's when I was in the world. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to refresh your mind about the grace and goodness of God that what he did when we passed through this cross. <sighs> Governed by our corrupt and central nature, obeying the impulse of the flesh, and the thoughts of the mind, our craving dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings, we were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignant nation like the rest of mankind. So all mankind is on this side to cross their lost. All right, let's go to the next verse. Oh, this is where the good news. But God. So rich is he in his mercy, while you were in that condition on this side of the cross, while we were the, under the influence of the demon power, we obeyed every impulse of our flesh, and we did whatever our flesh wanted. We catered to it, and we were lost and bound to hell. But God so rich is he in his mercy, because, and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Now catch that. <sighs> when you really come in grips with the power of love, there's no strain in helping people. There's no strain in, li in living for God. That intense love that you have for that person or that intense love that you have for God, that's what's in love. It just flows. You don't have to strain at it. That's all you can do is love people because you genuinely love them. Not their sin, but you love them. See, that's that intense love of God that's been poured into our heart by the Holy Ghost. You don't try to produce the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit that's in you that pours out of you. That's simple. You don't have to do anything but walk in the Spirit and it pours out of you. It manifests through you to other people. 
Oh, saints of God, if we could understand that. If you understand just a little bit of it, raise your hand. Give me a little encouragement. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. You don't have to try to do anything. You just let him flow. And if you don't understand that, then maybe you're not hooked up to the source. It is so awesome when you can come to that place to come into your rest in God. One amen over here. Another one over here. That's good. That's two, three. Right? It was one there. Any more? I hear three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, when you come into that rest, oh, you just enjoy the Lord and He just flows through you. Don't have to muster up anything. It just flows. It just flows. I don't have to tr try to love you guys. I can't help from loving you. Because the love of God's been shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And that's all that love can do is love. Love. That intense love. Look at that word. That intense love which He loved us. We don't have to do anything to make God love us. He just loves us. Can we grasp that? Stop your striving. Quit trying to be accepted by your, your whatever you're trying to get people to accept you. He just loves you with an intense love. And when you connect up with that, all you can do is love folks. It is the most wonderful walk in the world when you can walk in the Spirit because all of the fruits of the Spirit will just flow out of you to others. Simple, not complicated. Now look at this. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, next at verse 5, He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Why we were the ugliest we could be. We were the sinfulness of we could be. God reached out and began to do something for us. God help me. Do you just do things for people when they're good? Hmm? If they line up with my uh, mm, convictions and the way I see it ought to be, uh, I'll do something for them. But until they get their act together... I ain't going to mess with them. Oh, God, thank you. You didn't do that for all of us. Why, we were yet in deep mud sin. His love reached out. And while we were as dirty as we could be, our diapers need to be changed more than one time. That's when he did it. When you were at your lowest point. Am I talking too loud? I got my hearing aid in. It sounds like I'm yelling. I'm not yelling, am I? <laughs> Put your wig back on. <clears throat> Can we understand that? We have any Pharisees in the house? Here's Jesus. He's in Simon's house. He's in Simon's house. And this woman comes in. She's the prostitute. She begins to cry and, and put the oil on Jesus and her hair is down, dry on his feet. And Simon, huh, if he knew what type of woman that was, he wouldn't have allowed that at all. Somebody's missing it, Simon. Christ didn't come for the righteous. He came for me.
that were deep in sin, separated by God, following the spirit of this world. Oh, you might have had a nice house, nice car, all of that. But how was your heart towards God and his creatures? See, that's what God will do when you let him. You know, Jesus said, you know, Simon, <clears throat> got a question for you. What do you call, uh, no, no, not that, no. <sighs> Who loves the most? Listen, you know. Right. He that has been, wow. He that has been forgiven the most, loves the most. Now you know why I love God. He has forgiven me from all my sour ugliness, ungodliness. thinking I'm better than somebody else because I don't do that or don't do this or do that. He's forgiven me. And he allowed me. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Bob. Catch this now, church. We don't have to keep the law anymore. Oh, now just hold it. Don't throw rocks at me yet. <laughs> Let me finish my sermon. Because how can a dead man keep the law? The Bible says in, in Romans 7, verse 4, we died to the law. Anybody know this scripture besides me? We died to the law. Oh, the law is still there. And I don't have to try to keep it for my salvation. And I can't keep it in, in my own effort and through my flesh. But as I walk in the Spirit, the result is I don't trespass against the Ten Commandments. Can we understand that? Yes. See, the lawgiver has been placed into us. And so the law has been replaced by the lawgiver. The law is an external don'ts and don'ts and do this or do that, whatever. But now we have an inward one who keeps the law for us as we walk with him and walk in the Spirit. Do we see that, church? Okay, very simple, not complicated. Now, let's see. Who, who's going to be sin for me? Not everybody volunteer. <laughs> uh, here's sin. Sin sit right over there. Right, stand right over there, sin. Let's see. <sighs> All right. Sin is not dead. Everybody say that. <laughs> sin is not dead. But let me tell you something. I... Don't, don't worry, it doesn't bother me. Because see, I'm, listen to this, I'm dead to sin. See, sin is not dead. Sin is still in the world, still trying to lure me. No, I'm dead to sin. My relationship with sin has been broken by the cross. I died with Christ. And it is no more I that liveth, but it is Christ living in me now. And he's walking, or go ahead and walk around, you know, trying to tip everybody. But see, he's alive. Oh, he's working. But I'm dead towards him. I have no relationship whatsoever. He don't bother me. Hey! <laughs> That's one of my specials. <clears throat> I'm dead towards sin. So, How can a dead man... Mess with something that's trying to lure me. No, I'm dead. My relationship is broken. You may be seated. <laughs> 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 
You know, it's simple. Charles, stand right there. See, here's sin again. <laughs> By the way, you were crucified on the cross too. Anyway, sit over there. No, you can stand right there. Here's the point I'm trying to make. All right, there's, there's, there, 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 yeah, let us have it, okay. There's Charles, and I'm mad at him. So I'm not going to have anything to do with him anymore. As far as I'm concerned, our relationship is cut, and I'm through with him. That's what we are to do with sin. Come on now. So sit, sit down. Now, you know yourself many times, listen to me now, you've practiced that with people. I ain't going to have nothing to do with Susan. She says, I eat pork and beans every night. No, I don't. It's llama beans. That's worse, isn't it? Well, anyway, let's move on. <sighs> do you understand it? Get mad at sin. Sin shall not have power over you anymore because you have died to sin. Sin is alive and well, but I have died to sin. Say, we, if we get it lined up in our mind, well, there's so-and-so. I ain't going to have nothing to do with that so-and-so. Huh? You get that? Now, you ain't mad at sin. Where's sin at? Susan, come up here. Yeah, you're next. You're next. I'm, sh I'm sharpening my knife. You can stand right there. Don't get too close, sin. Now, there ain't, nobody, there, <laughs> there ain't nobody looking. No sin. You don't do that. You come to daddy. <laughs> Somebody's looking. You can be seated. Sin. Sin. The love affair has been broken by the cross. Sin shall not have power over me. See, you've got to get that in your brain. In your inner man. You're in your heart. Mary's not here today, so I can bring out my snake. Huh? I'll, I'll, over this side over here. He's a goner. Sin. See, Jesus bruised his heel. I'm sorry, Satan bruised Jesus' heel when Jesus, through the cross, zapped him. Ms. James, would you catch this for me? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, the other day, how many remember? How many remembers when? Uh, how many remembers when I said another snake went up under our house about two weeks ago? How many remember that? All right. Say he ain't no more. Say I said, Lord, Susan touched and agreed. Uh, Bring that snake out where I can kill him. I was on my golf cart. Isn't that amazing? I have my paddle in the golf cart. And the exact time, and he's laying out there in the, taking a sun bath in my front yard. And I have a sign up. No sun. No, 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 huh? no sun tan in, no in my front yard, especially snakes. <laughs> See, he didn't read the manual. So I come by exact timing now. Remember, I touch and agree with Susan. 
there's the snake. <laughs> there ain't no snake there no more. I went over and threw him in the... <laughs> I'm looking over there. No, I better not over there. <laughs> Mr. Key's back in the nursery. <laughs> I threw it over Mr. Key's yard. <laughs> but see, you, you see, as I see that snake, I see sin. Sin will destroy the man of God. Sin will destroy. Oh, it's fun for a while. <laughs> Feel it up to the brim. I'll take two more shots. do 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 Is that Bible? Sure it is. Sin is what? Fun for a season, but the end thereof is what? Death. So you learn that along the way. Now, let's get the picture here. Hmm. Look at God's grace. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Boy, that is powerful. Verse 5. I can't see. Is that verse 6? Verse, all right, 5. We've already gone through. Yeah, let's go through that. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, when did he make us alive? When we were dead in our trespasses. Way before we accepted Jesus as our Lord, God put us in Christ, I think, before the foundation of the world, personally. Okay? Now, we had to be in Christ when he was crucified. We all agree to that. If we were to be crucified with Christ, we had to be in Christ when they nailed him to the cross. Can we see that? See, everything is in Christ. That little word, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. In Christ, we have victory. In Christ, we have salvation. In Christ, we have strength and power. In Christ, we have a great hope of the future. Everything is in Christ. So God put our old man in Christ. And when Christ died on the cross, Bob Tilton died. When, Bob, when the Lord was buried in the tomb, Bob Tilton and you, every Christian, was buried with Christ. And when Christ was resurrected, came out on this side of the cross, we became new creatures in Christ. Our, our inner man, listen to this now, our inner man recreated by the power of God. You do not, if you're born again, you do not have the old spirit. That old spirit died here on the cross. On this side of the cross, we were sinners. We passed through the cross, and we come out on this side, and now we're saints of God. On this side of the cross over here, before we were saved, we were children of the devil. On this side, as we die to, with Christ, we come out, and now God is our heavenly Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. All right? Now, Here's where people make their mistake. They follow their feelings. My goodness, if you follow your feelings, how many would be in bed this morning besides me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't follow your feelings. Like Charles teaches us, we walk by principle. We walk by the Word of God. We live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We walk by principle. Hello? Very simple, not complicated. Because if you walk by your feelings, you're only going to go one way. And that's the wrong way. You have got to learn obedience to the truth. And your soul, the Bible says, and your soul will be purified. All right. Now, here we are on this side. And all of this applies to us now. Let's finish that. Look at that. <sighs> he made us alive together. I love that. All of us was in Christ, and then when Christ was resurrected, all of us 
have been raised to new life in Christ, and now we're all brothers and sisters. We belong to the family of God, and there's one faith, one baptism, that Christ baptized us all into Christ by His Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that. He did it for us. We accept it by faith. Hello? We accept it by faith. God is not a man that he should lie. We simply accept it by faith. Now, you're going to still, even though on your side, there's times you're going to have all kind of feelings. Is that true? Huh? Anybody ever had a, a feeling like you wanted to send somebody to the moon? Raise your hand. Sure. Quit, quit looking at your mate. <laughs> That's true. How many had the feeling you just didn't want to get up this morning? Yeah. You'd still be in bed. No. You learn on this side of the cross, the Holy Spirit teaches you discipline. I know that's a new word for some folk, but it's a real word. My wife has disciplined me over the years. It took time, didn't it, huh? She ain't talking. I thank God. She's been a good influence on me. Bob, you got to get up. I don't want to get up. But you got to get up. Why should I have to get up? Well, you got to get up. Why? Because you're the preacher. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How many of you know I love you? How many is bored? One, two, three, four. <laughs> you want? Well, I'm going to go that way. All right. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. This is powerful. He gave us the very life of Christ. He gave us the very life of God. Where did you get that life? From Jesus. Charles, where did you get that life? See, that's the new quality of life. Now, you could still operate in that old life you had over here. Oh, how many Christians are still living over here in this old life? No, he's given us a new life. If you understand that, that all of that died at Calvary, and, and when Jesus was buried, you were, that old man is gone forever. He's a goner. Everything he wants to do, you don't let him do no more. Oh, he'll try to exert himself over you. He'll try to be boss. You know how you do it, women. Shut up and sit down. Yes, dear. <laughs> Where did you get that black guy? Well, I thought my wife said, stand, uh, sit, uh, let's see, where'd you get that black guy? I thought my wife said, stand up, but she said, sit down, and I stood up. Anyway, uh, I didn't, I hadn't seen her for two weeks, but after two weeks, I saw her, one, just a little glimpse of her out of one eye. Remember, I've been around a long time. I've been, I've been referee couples over the years. Okay. All right, but listen, what you've got to see now, you're a brand new creature in Christ. You still have this old body, but one day you're going to have a glorified body. And until now, the body is not sinful. It's that, that old nature in there that died with Christ, and you've got to agree with it. And every day, thank you, God, I can reckon upon it. I don't have to let that old man anymore boss me around. All right? I need one, two. Thank you, Charles and Floyd. All right, which one wants to be the old man? I'm the old, I'm huh? the old man. You're older? Sit over there. Stand over there. All right. Here, here's my new man. Now, here I am. Now, which one's the old man? That's the old man, and you're the new man. All right, tell me to do something. What should I do? Now, now notice this. What I yield to becomes, tell me. Hello out there. 
my master. So if I keep yielding to the Holy Spirit, then he becomes my master. Here's our problem. I keep yielding over here. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, after a couple of days, I feel condemned all over again. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Back. I died to you. I died to you. Back. Oh, you forgive me. Oh, my God. And, and, and this, is, this is the, uh, the uh, and I've, how many have been in that cycle? Come on, church. Speak to me now. We've all been through that cycle. But no more. I've touched a hot stove and it burns. Doesn't it, son? Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right. You can sit down. Sit down. All right, no fighting. All right. Got that on camera. All right. Now, listen, he gave us the very life of Christ. We have the very life of Christ. I can either obey the Holy Spirit or obey my flesh. All right, let me give you a little quiz here. I've got about five minutes. We've got to water baptize. Gosh, I just get started. <sighs> Father. Turn real quick to Romans chapter 6. Real quick. Romans chapter 4. That's all good. I've got to finish that. Look, the same way life, light which he quickened him. Oh, this is good. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. That is Jesus. God quickened him, Jesus. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Woo! Suck that in. Suck that in, church. I could talk about that, but I want to go to Romans real quick. Romans 6, if you will. Romans 6. Time element is always bothers me. All right. Now listen to what John, uh, Paul says here in Romans. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? And Paul says, no. A lot of people say, well, there's grace where sin abounds, grace abounds more. So the more I sin, the more God will send me grace. And God will look really good because he gives me a lot of grace. And that's not the way it works. Go ahead. Paul's going to straighten that up right now. Next verse. Certainly not. How can we who died, notice, died to sin. Sin didn't die. We died to sin live in it any longer. We are dead to it. Our relationship to it has been cut, severed by the, by the cross when we died. So how can we live in it? Now go to the next verse. Boy, this is good. Are you ignorant? Now he's talking to Christians. I dare Paul call us ignorant. You hear what he said? We were ignorant. Humble yourself. Okay. Are you ignorant of the fact Say fact. Hmm. What is this fact? That all of us, all of us, who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death where? At the cross. This is not the water baptism. The water baptism only shows a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It has no power to save us. Here's where the power is, at the cross. God put us in Christ. When Christ died, he baptized us into Christ, Jesus, and we were baptized into his death, and we don't exist no more. We're gone. The old Bob Tilton is gone, and that's why the Bible says, any man be in Christ, what? He is a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Powerful. Wow. So, sometimes people say, but you know, in my past, and I say, what past? No, don't you, are you ignorant of this fact? 
that everything you did in that old creation died when Christ died, and God don't remember nothing about it anymore. Hello? And the devil will just beat people to death on something they did back when they were teenagers. Now, I know no women in here or men when they were teenagers did anything at the drive-in movie back in those days. Some of you don't know what to think. Some of you are laughing. No, no, see, that's all gone. Hello, hello, that, say, it's, say it's gone. Everybody say, it's gone. You don't have any past. The only thing you have is what's on this side of the cross as a new creature in Christ. So you're walking along, you're enjoying the Lord, you're learning to walk in the Spirit, you're fellowship with the Lord. Oh, I have such wonderful times just fellowship with Jesus. But all of a sudden, as a Christian, as a saint, Let's say that I talked about somebody, and we know that's sin. How do I get out from under that now? How do I push the devil back from harassing me? Somebody tell me. Huh? Huh? I didn't hear you. His word. And where's that at? First John 1 9. Charles to the rescue. Everybody say, 1 John 1, 9, nail it down. And what does it say? Oh, I'm going to get every one of you now. Uh, I'm a mean pastor. Honey, if I sin, what do I do, darling? Cry about three days? Beat the, beat the, beat the altar down? What, what, what do I do, huh? If I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Wow. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you really confessed that you were talking to somebody about somebody, which is sin, by the way, and if you read the Scriptures, you'll find out the people in uh, Israel who... Something happened bad towards them because they did that. Now, you know what I used to do? I was good at confessing. But I did not receive the other part of that scripture. That God was faithful and just to beat me up. Huh? No, to forgive me, notice, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And now what unrighteousness do you have? If the Lord has cleansed you. How many in here have failed in that area? We would confess it and we let the devil beat us up for two weeks. And then God spoke to me one day and says, you know, Bob, your problem is unbelief. You don't believe that I'm faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do. I said, that's pretty good. Do. How many follow me? Huh? Hello? Hello? Who? Yeah, I guess you could. Uh-huh. You want to what? Oh, you want to make an appointment with Pastor Bob and Susan? What's the problem? Oh, shit. Uh, let's handle this over the phone. <laughs> you need to come to my Sunday school class, son, and I'll teach you how to get out from under that. That's what the Bible says. And by the way, God is faithful and just. And you know what he will do? He, if you confess it to him, of course, he didn't know it, you know. He don't know anything. Hardly. I mean, you know, but you, you're not going to squeal on yourself? Well, he knows it anyway. You don't... But if you confess it, God Almighty, your Heavenly Father is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So you beat yourself up for about three weeks 
and you finally come into the victory. Now you can clap, you can pray again, you can come to the throne. Before that, you just couldn't face the Lord, you know. It's like when somebody, you've done something to somebody, you can't hardly face them. Huh? In three weeks, the Lord was wanting you to come and fellowship with him. And because you didn't accept his promise, all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. God, can we grasp what the Lord has done for us? Sin is finished. It's done for. And if we do make a mistake, we know what to do. And if you make a mistake, what do you do? Confess it. To who? To God. Right. And, 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 and God is what? Faithful and just. To do what? See, see, the problem is unbelief here. Oh, my goodness, don't talk about that. But, but see, I'm, I, I want us to get moving in this thing in God. I want us to, 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 to just don't let, give the devil no more room for three weeks to beat you up and just receive his God. And when you come to church, it's... Oh, do, 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 do. What are you so happy about? Oh, man, you don't know. I f- the river, I'm free, I'm clean. Oh, what a day it has been. Walking with Jesus. <laughs> Are you clean this morning? Huh? Oh, I just started with this message, but we got to baptize. Are you ready? Now remember, the water baptism tells the world. You died with Christ. You were buried with Christ, and you're gone. You're gone. I will not hold you under the water very long. But when you come out, see, this is a simulating experience. Everybody know what a simulating experience is? It's just like that when you go down in that water, it's like you just died with Christ. You're buried with Christ. That old, everything about your old, gone. You don't remember nothing. Brand new. Recreated in Christ Jesus, your Lord. So forget about all those times at the, at the drive-in movie. And all that was taken care of at Calvary. And now it's like you've been justified. Just like you have never sinned. Clean before God Almighty. Hallelujah. What a salvation we have. Wow. Everybody say, Lord, just in case I forgot, forgive me for all these different sins that I've been doing, and I receive your cleansing. And your forgiveness. The blood has cleansed me. And I'm clean. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Okay. The girls over here, Naomi, and the, and the boy over here on this side. I'll take care of him. All right. Some gentlemen will take care of the pulpit. And I guess you could leave it over to one side because... Uh, While they're getting ready back there, I was um, excited when he started reading the scripture in chapter 6 of Romans, verse 2, where it says, Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Go ahead and put that back up if you don't mind. That's uh, Romans 6, verse 2. 
That word died, the original root word means, are you ready for this? Departure, separation, to die off or to get away from. It's not, it's not just a death like we would see, oh yeah, that's just the word death, but it is a full word meaning to totally get away from, just like he said when he was showing us those different um, examples up here. So certainly not. Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace and mercy may multiply and overflow? Everyone say, certainly not. Certainly not. Amen. Amen. That was a good word today. How many of y'all enjoyed that? Oh, yeah. Floyd, you got your camera? You want to? <coughs> yes, Naomi will love you to take pictures. Floyd, I got the microphone. Can you zoom over my head? I'm over here saying, is the camera okay? Don't threaten me. <laughs> see, see, you know, God's grace and mercy endureth forever. Oh, there is so much peace in that. When you know God, when you know God is on your side and he knows your heart, you never have to explain yourself to anyone. But yet, she's but yet I'm explaining myself. <laughs> but it's such a peace when you know that you don't have to defend yourself every time someone says something. That's right. Go ahead. Don't defend yourself. There you go. Don't ever defend yourself. This is a stand-up comedy right before the thing, right? All right, here comes Pastor Bob. Yes. Dun, 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 Woo! Watch that first step. Yep. Is it still warm? You can take pictures. Just let me know when you take it. I, I want to make sure I'm smiling. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Now remember, we God put us in Christ, and we were baptized into Christ. You'll see that into Christ. God does not want us to be ignorant, but it's a fact that when Christ died, we died with him. But when he was resurrected, we were resurrected to walk in the newness of life. And he's given us his Holy Spirit now to help us until we come into our full salvation when we get our glorified bodies and we go to be with the Lord to live forever and ever and ever and ever. This is such a short time down here. So just praise God that we can get through and enjoy our time down here and share our faith with others. Let them, they don't know what I've taught this morning. Most people don't even know, have any idea of what we teach here. And the devil will keep them away. But we keep preaching, keep people, let people know what the Lord has done. That's why I'm excited. It's what the Lord has done. Amen. 
Okay, we're going to start right now. They're getting ready on this. A young man, come right here. Easy on that step. Now hold, hold easy now. Easy. Let me have your hand. Okay. One more. Where's where's your grandma at? She's in the and your family. mom. Is your mom out there? Where's mom? Oh, this is this mom right there. Aunt. Aunt. That's aunt. That's pretty close. Where's my uh, grandma? At? Oh, she's over there. Okay. All right, you stay right here. All right, look at me now. Now they, they, they ain't going nowhere. Okay, look at me. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? You do. Okay. Do you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead? Okay. Then the Bible says you're saved. And when you pass through this fight, you'll go to heaven. But while you're down here, He says, "I'll never leave you." I will never forsake you. I will be with you and guide you through this life where when this life ends down here, you will ever be with the Lord throughout eternity. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. You want to hold your nose where I dip you? All right, you hold your nose. One, you want to hold your nose because I'm going to dip you down. All right, are you ready? All right. I baptize you, my son, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus Christ and Matthew, buried with Christ in baptism, risen to walk in the newness of life. Father, just fill him with the Holy yes. Ghost. And Lord, I break every curse ten generations back. He's free from the past. He died with Christ and he's resurrected with Christ now to walk in the newness of life. And Lord, put that great desire in his heart to read your word every day and let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon him that the eyes of his heart might be filled with light and i thank you now for this young man in jesus name amen hallelujah smile at him. all right we got it one more Okay, be careful now going up that step there by now. Easy now, easy now, easy, go ahead, all right. All right. Next. Take, take her out. You know, you gotta wait on the girls. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's not what Christian said. <laughs> okay, here they come. is your Lord and Savior? Okay. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? All right. The Bible says you're saved. Okay. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus. Risen to walk in the newness of life. And Father, I thank you for filling her with the precious Holy Spirit. And Lord, I thank you that every curse ten generations back has been broken yes. by the name of Jesus and she's free to walk and give you glory. Peace, my child. Peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. Wow. All right. Raise your hand. Here you go. All right. Next. Next. is your Lord and Savior, okay? Uh, do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? 
Okay. Then I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus. Buried with Christ, risen to walk in the newness of life. Lord, fill her with the Holy Ghost, and we break all curses. Ten generations back, she's free to serve you and walk with you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Wait, let's put her Okay, I want to take a picture of you. I en uh, he was first, I said. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> what? Missy, he was first. Missy wanted to make sure there weren't any boys. So oh, there ain't no more boys. That's it. You're the only boy today. Yeah. All right. All right. I just enjoy bearing the old man. <laughs> and I enjoy seeing the new man come forth and live for the glory of God. And remember, he didn't leave us down here as orphans. He gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us. And the Holy Spirit will show us yet things to come. And we know there are some things coming quick. If you've been watching the news. So we know something is happening all over this world. That's showing that the Lord's return is shortly come, going to come to pass. And I can't wait till he comes. God bless you. If you're here and you've never received Christ. Come up and Charles will be here. And... Uh, and, and uh, Rachel, and they'll talk with you and lead you in the right path. God bless you. You're dismissed. Okay, thank you.